Welcome to this episode of OpenSCAD by DIY3D.com. In this episode, we're going to do some introductories to uh, OpenSCAD. So one of the biggest things I get questioned about quite a bit is, is why OpenSCAD? Um, and one of the reasons, and, and I'm going to go through like the top 10. So, and, and these are not necessarily any particular order, but just as I sort of jotted them down. Uh, but one of the top ones for me is it's free. Um, so th there's a number of, of open source softwares out there, uh, you know, Blender also, etc., that are free. And there's a lot of commercial applications like uh, Tinkercad and... Um, uh, one, two, three, three D, and, and and that kind of stuff that that are also free for use, but they're they're not free. So you get a free account, as you see here. But we'll talk about some of those things later. And it's not that it's good or bad, but it just is, you know, something to be aware of. And again, we'll cover that. But um, uh, OpenSCAD is free, so this is one of the great things about it. It's um, you know, licensed. Uh, you know, the license is uh, is freeware under the general public uh, license version two. So this is, I think, one of the big benefits for this, and especially you know how you use the software. So economically, it, it, it's free. So it, it's great for getting started if you're on a budget. But also, it's a very powerful software that what piece of software that we'll talk about in a minute. So, as because one of those things is being related to freeware is is the licensing of the product. So, what many many other applications or commercial applications that allow you free accounts do is, is limit the commercial use of the product. So, say for example, you design um, a product in their free offering, you cannot offer that commercially, or it may be impeded legally by being offered commercially, and so you don't really have those same type of issues was something generated under OpenSCAD. Now, in full disclosure, I'm not an attorney and I'm not intending to give legal advice here. Um, just simply point out some, some of the different, different dynamics because one of the things I do highly suggest is, is to go and read the terms and conditions of, of any uh, you know, software that you're using, especially if you're going to use it commercially. If you're just knocking around personally, that's a different story. But if if you think you might use it commercially, or you think something might end up commercial, then please, by all means, read the terms and conditions. Uh, they all have a. It's good to know. But uh, this is one of the things I like about OpenSCAD is is uh, the openness under the general public licensing of the software itself and the creation. So big bonuses there. Uh, the other piece is, is accuracy. So it, it is parametric, and one of the big things that I do like about it is here is a piece that I've designed. It, it's an adapter, and one of the things, if you notice here, is you can specify the designs very specifically. Now, you can do this in, in other applications to sort of. Um, and I don't mean to get too particular here, but for example, in, in this, let's use Tinkercad a, a, as an example. So if I were to go into, say, Tinkercad, and uh, let's let's just do this, and I were to take up, say, this object, this plant coaster object, and let's let's do, look at a quick tinker of it. One of the things that um, you notice this this was actually an import and you'll notice that the sides are very smooth where if I were to create a, just a circle on its own notice the let, let's move the circle over see these the in we'll z zoom up in on it if I get my mouse to work see these 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 striations here so you cannot control that in Tinkercad now in some of the higher end programs you can but as we'll see in in OpenSCAD um, you can set the facets of this or how much the surface is of this and so one of the pieces is, is it gives you a, a much more finite control over the object itself or the object size itself which is really important so you can get very very precise uh, dimensions out of this and again you could use something like Fusion 360 which gives you a, a, additional dimensions but you also get the added complexity of, of Fusion 360 so it's kind of talking about the trade-offs, but precision uh, is very important for me with regards to um, OpenSCAD and how I can sp specify a size implicitly in the programming language and the, the part comes out this size. So, uh, for example, with this adapter, 
that I made here for dust collection. I, I wanted it fairly tight tolerances and if you look at the on our sister channel DIY3dtech.com the product it, it is a very tight tolerance to um, the PVC pipe it fits into and I would think I would have had a hard time doing that in, in, in something like Tinkercad. Again Fusion 360 probably would have been a little bit better because I was able to control the facets of the surface area here which got me a very precise fit. Now again if this sounds a little bit complex don't worry about it as we go through a lot of the tutorials you'll understand what I'm getting at. So but just accuracy is an important part. The other piece is being parametric or being able to set parameters and that's what I have here. So say I want to change uh, my inlet ID from 55 to say let's say 75 so I enter the new value simply hit F5 and boom is now adjusted and now I can create relationships based upon that also in, in OpenSCAD which is critical so this is again being parametric or allowing parameters is what's very important and this is what's going to kind of uh, help us along in, in a lot of code reuse which we'll talk about in, in a minute so the other piece that I also want to touch on is the language itself. The, now, don't don't be daunted, especially if you're you're not a computer programmer or anything like that. Actually, the language is very very simple, and in, in, in a lot of folks, including myself, all, you know, kind of question whether this is really a programming language or more of a scripting language. I tend to think it's more of a scripting language. And again, I'm not going to get into all the details of programming language versus scripting language, but just long story short, there's no recursion in the language itself. So in other words, it starts at the top, it runs to the bottom, nothing brings it back onto itself. In other words, like in the old basic days, you know, print and then go back to line 10, print again, you know, so that makes it very simple. So everything is going to happen in a linear fashion. So all you do is have to think top to bottom. Also, the one other thing we'll talk about here is, is basically the the commands build upon themselves. So translate, rotate, all all affect a primitive object, or extrusion, um, or, or all affect a primitive object. So, uh, you know, and a primitive object is, is a basic shape like a circle or a square or something like that, and then you add or subtract them together. So, very simple. So, so, so. You know, when you look at this, most of what you see is comments here. So, and again, as we go through a lot of the tutorials, which I'm going to do, I've I've very much commented these, and they'll be on the website, and so you can see what I've done and why I've done it, and, and so you can kind of learn at a quicker pace as to how this these pieces go. Uh, this the other piece is reusability of designs. So the the thing is, is, is if you need a part of this or you need this adapter as part of another model, you simply can cut and paste this code into the other model as, as a module. See, as I have a module right here, and we'll talk about modules in, in future episodes uh, if you're not familiar with what that is. But this allows the great transportability. So once you design, so when you design it once, you just simply keep reusing that object. And this is what's really great about about OpenSCAD is you just keep reusing. You develop a lot library of tools which is a very powerful um, you, you know design mechanism so as you move through so you're not designing you know kind of like one piece and throwing it away and then another piece throwing it away and, and that's one of the things we'll talk about in the workflow of using OpenSCAD is how do you build a library of these modules and components which is important so the other piece I want to touch on is, is the internet. So there is a large amount of code. So if we look at, if we just go open SCAD code, you know, one of the things you'll see here is there's tons of tutorials on, on YouTube and the internet about open SCAD. Now, this is with, with regards to this channel, what I'm going to focus on is not basic OpenSCAD. There's already tons of videos uh, about open SCAD. So you'll be able to pick up some of the pieces about basic open SCAD programming from uh, watching these videos but I'd highly recommend going on YouTube just type in open SCAD there's tons of them you'll get the basics of it the focus of this channel will be how to use open SCAD effectively so it mainly around workflows in, in ideas of use and things like that so I'm going to assume that you have a 
basic understanding of of, uh, of OpenSC had going into this. Now I, I'm going to try to be particular in covering out the various pieces, but just also know there's a huge community out there on the internet uh, for code and other resources, and that's the one thing that's really great about it is is again there's so much out there, and Thingiverse is just packed with it. So. Um, because you know Thingiverse is a big supporter and, and the customizer functions inside Thingiverse are all based upon OpenSCAD so if you can write OpenSCAD you can develop a customizer in Thingiverse and, and it, it's a great thing so definitely a large amount of code on the internet and also a large community too so um, as I'm shown here there's uh, definitely a big community here on the OpenSCAD site itself and then many other sites where um, the, you know there's you can get a lot of community involvement so if you're having a problem you can ask somebody that knows etc uh, you want to hit me up in the comments below I'm happy to do that but again it's a big uh, community and the second thing is it's well established open SK has been around for quite a while so you have uh, a well established community in this also and so that's you know another big positive and then finally one of the big things is is uh, I've sort of mentioned it already but it works with with Tinker uh, sorry not Tinkercad um, Thingiverse and, and so long story short you can develop um, customizers in this and you can kind of see Thingiverse customizers and so let, let's just take a quick look so all these customizers are open SCADs for example these bolts these con parametric connectors all of this stuff is created in OpenSCAD and allows you to customize the product. So this is what's really cool about this, unlike uh, other applications out there, is you can create this and share your designs dynamically like this easy gyro etc and these other forms so again it's a very powerful tool and my point here is in this is to cover the top 10 and just to recap um, you know number one it's freeware number two there's no licensing issues three it's accurate four it's parametric five it's easy to learn six reusability of designs uh, seven large amounts of code on the internet uh, eight supported by a large community nine it's well established in ten works with Thingiverse so those are all the big pauses of at least the top ten for me to really choose uh, open SCAD is one of my primary tools for developing uh, both 3d and 2d models and we'll talk about that in future episodes so anyways uh, hopefully you found this interesting and again kind of a kickoff to this channel wanted to share the the top 10 list if you will uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel there'll be a lot of material coming out I've done a lot of designs so uh, being subscribed means that you'll get notified of them when they come out and uh, hey give it a thumbs up subscribe and we'll see you in the next video Cheers.